Thank you, everyone. Um, we've got a relatively short slideshow uh, to, to present, uh, explain why we're here and uh, what type of project we're considering. And uh, <clears throat> I'd like to hold comments until after the presentation. But if there's something I say you don't understand, I'm happy to stop to clarify anything during our presentation. Uh, it's a pretty small group. We can keep it informal. Um, so I guess quickly introductions. My name is Greg Backus. I'm a project manager with the consulting firm of VHB in Bedford. And we do a lot of transportation type projects around New England and beyond. Uh, and I'm happy to be here to do some more work in, in Hudson. We do have experience in the town and uh, we're happy to be back. And My name is Elvis Dima, I'm the town engineer. And we have tonight Select Memorial with us as well. This will go into um, the study and the engineering phase for the next year, this year, and we're hoping to break ground next year. So this is not something that we're going to turn around real quick, so there's plenty of time to take comments, any concerns you might have, and go from there. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what we're looking for a time frame. Typically, projects like this go three to five years. We're shooting for an 18-month completion date, uh, including breaking ground and uh, getting the construction done. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into that a little bit later on, but with that said, I'll mm -hmm. give it back to Craig. Okay, thank you. And um, our very last slide has our contact information on it. If you don't think uh, you have a comment you didn't think to give tonight, you can do it in the future, and we'll accept comments. So, <coughs> so please refer to the, uh, the monitor on our left for the slides. So the purpose of the meeting is um, to review the project limits and the context. You know, what is it we're looking at and, and where exactly are we talking about? It's a relatively compact project area, and I'll explain that. Um, review the pro program funding requirements. There's federal money involved here. And um, as a result, there are some stipulations and some procedures that we have to follow. Um, we'll review some of the things that we're going to consider as we advance the project. Um, we're going to review what's called the purpose and need statement. It's something that we, um, we create at the very beginning of a project that kind of defines what it is we're trying to solve. Uh, and that, that statement is used throughout the project to kind of judge to see how we're doing. Are we still within the original scope and are we accomplishing what we want to accomplish? Uh, we'll talk about next steps and what the project schedule is and then uh, we'll accept your input. So let's get into some details. So the location you're probably all familiar with. Um, <clears throat> it is uh, Lowell Road is Route 3A in Hudson going north-south. And we're looking at the intersection of Lowell Road and the ramps to the Sagamore Bridge, which go over the river towards Nashua. The circle on the screen is really pretty much the project area. This is just another version of that, a little more detail. Um, we're primarily interested in the southbound uh, movement on 3A to the westbound movement onto the, uh, the Sagamore approach. Zooming in once again, uh, the yellow boundary represents uh, our project area. It's relatively confined uh, during the study phase anyway to this, to this area. Uh, you can see on the left is um, the intersection of 3A, or Low Road, and uh, Flagstone Drive, and Wasson Road. And then heading south to the right <coughs> is uh, the on-ramps to the Sagamore Bridge. So those program requirements that I spoke of, um, this is a project that, uh, it's a local project. Um, Hudson administers the project with the assistance from us, the engineers. And, uh, but New Hampshire DOT provides oversight. Um, because there's federal money involved, uh, again, there are a lot of stipulations with that money, and DOT administers that. Um, so uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, what some of the federal requirements are as we go forward. And as Elvis well knows, it's all about the process. And these um, DOT locally managed projects, uh, you really have to um, follow the process exactly. Um, there's no backing up. You have to make sure you cover all your bases. 
And where are we in that process? Very early. Uh, we're at the what's called the engineering study phase. We haven't designed anything yet. We have done a uh, topogra topographic survey of the project. So we have um, base plans that we're now able to work off of, which show the existing conditions. And uh, we're starting the study. With, and the study involves evaluating alternatives, design alternatives. And uh, once we package up that study and submit it to DOT, we're able to move into design after that. So some of the considerations on this project, specific considerations, um, are it's really centered around traffic conditions, and I'll talk about some of the details on that. Um, pedestrian and ADA accommodations, uh, we have to look at cultural and environmental resources, and then we're anticipating some right-of-way impacts with this project. Uh, so traffic, uh, existing traffic conditions, um, in 2018, the intersection level of service is an E. A being the best, F being the worst. We're almost at an F, we're at an E. And level of service is a measure of essentially operations, how well the intersection is uh, functioning. It's a measure of delay. Uh, so a level of service E uh, is not good. And I'm sure you're all aware of how that intersection functions, especially during the peak hours. You can wait through several <coughs> light, light cycles, and, uh, and I'm, I'm guessing a fair number of people try to avoid the intersection at peak hour. Um, in 2028, using just background growth in the area, um, we're predicting an intersection level of service F. So it won't take long. That's 10 years if we don't do anything, that it will really fail. And an F is bad. That means you are sitting through many light cycles and, and uh, it's not good. Uh, this image just shows what each of the different lanes experience. I won't get into too much detail, but it rates um, the level of service for each lane. And this is uh, in the AM peak hour, which we're most interested in because, as I said earlier, we're most interested in the southbound Lowell Road traffic, which is highest in the peak hour, in the AM peak hour, as opposed to it's mostly northbound in the PM. Um, so you can see that the southbound um, Lowell Road approach uh, is at uh, the, left the left turn lane is level of service E, the through lane is F, and the right turn lane is F. So that's today. That's what you're experiencing in the morning on the southbound approach. So that's really the critical uh, piece of information I wanted to show you there. In addition to capacity issues and congestion, we're also concerned with safety and the crash rate um, there over, over the past three years or a recent three-year study period, there were just over seven crashes per year in this intersection and a fair number had injuries. Um, I would say that Crash rate can be related to congestion. Uh, you have people that maybe push the light a little bit, go through the very end of the yellow to, to get through the intersection because they might have sat through two light, light cycles. People take risks. Uh, so congestion and safety can be related. And I think in this case, I don't really, this intersection doesn't, uh, nothing jumps out at me that there would be a safety problem here. So I think that the, um, the congestion may be leading to some of those uh, uh, safety numbers. Talk about pedestrians a little bit. This graphic shows in yellow where there are existing sidewalks. So you can see that there aren't sidewalks everywhere, um, but there is pretty good north-south connectivity. And the purple within the intersection shows where there are existing crosswalks. Um, so the primary intersection that we're talking about here has uh, signalized crosswalks. There are push buttons, pedestrian actuated signals where pedestrians can cross uh, either Lowell Road or the two side streets uh, with their own phase um, and so therefore protected. ADA accommodations, that's Americans, uh, Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, protecting uh, disabled people um, 
in public rights of way. Um, there are some deficiencies. The all of the all four corners at the intersection, um, the existing wheelchair ramps or pedestrian ramps, if you want to call them, um, they're not quite up to today's standards. They don't quite follow all the design guidelines. If we were to build them today. Um, they were built a while ago, so they were following the standards of the day, but they don't quite, um, uh, they're not quite up to code, I guess, if you want to call it that. So if we end up uh, doing any work within this intersection with federal money, we have to improve all four corners. So that's one thing that is likely to occur here is bring it up to code um, for ADA guidelines. Because there's federal money involved, we have to uh, explore uh, a host of environmental and cultural resource um, or resources to see if there are going to be impacts. And uh, one of those is cultural resources. And by that I mean, are there any historic structures or features uh, that we need to protect? Um, or, in, or archaeological um, features that are likely to occur here? Being that this is a um, fairly uh, built environment. We don't expect archaeological resources. The, the approach to the bridge is all on fill. The Lowell Road corridor is, has been uh, developed over the years, and so we don't expect archaeology. There is one structure that is potentially going to be impacted, and it's the one in this photograph. It's an old house. Is it historic? We don't know yet. We'd have to do an assessment of it, and our, and our historians would do that to see if it's technically historic. It doesn't look super historic, but anything over 50 years old, and I'm sure it is, could potentially be historic. So we have to just cover that base. The next one is environmental considerations, environmental resources. Um, I've circled on this graphic where there is a known wetland. Our, uh, one of our wetland scientists went out and delineated the boundary of that wetland, and it's approximately as shown here. Um, we don't know yet if we're going to be impacting it. We don't think we are. And in fact, we would probably do everything we can to not impact it. But go ahead. I was going to add, this was a man-made wetland. Right. So basically it's a detention basin that over the years turned into a wetland. That's the whole purpose of it. So mm -hmm. this was basically, it's, it's there to treat any runoff from Lowell Road that goes through different structures and eventually ends into this and eventually makes it to the, into a brook further back down. So it's a storage area, but nevertheless, it is a it's wetland. It does regulated. meet the criteria. Yep. Yep. So. And fortunately, we really don't see any other resources. Uh, this is a pretty benign area. Hopefully, I, I don't eat those words um, later on, but it looks um, relatively easy from a uh, resource perspective. I mentioned right-of-way impacts. Um, this graphic shows from your tax maps um, ownership of the parcels adjacent to the road. And the only, reason I, the only reason I yellowed out an area is if we end up widening Lowell Road in the um, westerly direction, it would impact those two lots that are adjacent to Lowell Road. So it's one of those things that we will step through as the design uh, for the improvements progress. So I mentioned that purpose and need statement. And this is something I'd be you know, open to hear feedback on, we, I drafted a, uh, what I consider the purpose and need, but that's certainly subject to interpretation. Uh, so the purpose of the project is to reduce congestion and improve air quality on Lowell Road, Route 3A, in the vicinity of the ramps to the Sagamore Bridge in Hudson. The need is, um, for this project is defined by poor intersection level of service, lengthy peak hour delays, and safety concerns on Lowell Road. And I should back up one second. I mentioned congestion and air, uh, congestion and air quality. This project is being funded by a federal grant uh, that is intended to address air quality and congestion in in uh, metropolitan or semi-metropolitan areas like this. Um, so the funding has to be used to reduce uh, congestion and air quality. We have to keep the scope limited to that sort of thing. So after tonight, the immediate next steps will be uh, we will then take your input and we will draft uh, design alternatives. And frankly, there really aren't too many alternatives here except for maybe the build alternative and the no build alternative. And you'll see at the next meeting we're going to present those alternatives 
at, at, <coughs> at, a meet, at a meeting just like this. And then we'll select the preferred alternative, we being the town, um, complete the engineering study, submit it to DOT for review, complete our environmental documentation, and then advance preliminary and then final design. So we hope to step through this process relatively quickly. You will probably be seeing a uh, notice again uh, that there will be an upcoming meeting to present our alternatives. And that's our presentation. Pretty quick and easy. I do have a quick question. How did you all hear about tonight's meeting? It would help us when we get the word out for the next one. Facebook. Facebook. Facebook? Posted on the town website. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a news. That's a news. Okay. Yeah, good. Good. A website. All right. Thank you. Um, were you familiar with this project? No. It's no. Okay. So, just to give you a quick, just uh, some additional information. Um, last year, the town voted in favor of this project. This project is currently at 1.5 million through an 80-20 program. So the feds have basically granted the town 1.2 million, while the town has to come up with a 20%, which is 300,000. Out of that 300,000, we're hoping that most of the money will come out of the corridor money, which means that it will not be an impact to the taxpayers, it will come out of the money that the developers give to the town when they do development along, along low road to basically minimize or make necessary improvements to different corridors. As you know, we have three different corridors out there, Route 3A, which is Lowell Road, 102, and 111. So in the past, the town, the Board of Selectmen has approved projects that basically takes money out of the corridors for something like this. We're hoping that this will address some of the AM traffic as the town works towards figuring out what we're going to do for the PM as well. As you know, we have issues on both sides of this. Um, and this is basically one of the projects that we're hoping to get the ball rolling and hopefully, as I said, sooner to get this through the process and break grounds. As you know, we can use some relief on Lower Road, especially AM. Um, but the town has approved the project, it has gone through the, you know, the voting process. It's already in and this was last year, I believe. So. Do you know what, what Warren article or? Was it, it was a CMAC project, low road widening. I believe that was the Warren article. We got approved in October. Right after that, it went through the Board of Selectmen. It was recommended, and it went in March. And right after that, we got the state to give us a contract or the agreement between the state and us. And then we basically were out, went through the process, picked VHB, negotiated a price, and DOT approved it, and we went from there. The way it works is the town runs a project. DOT <laughs> is a project manager at the state level, and then the money comes from the Fed. So everything needs to go through the process, and <coughs> everything goes through the state for the QAQC, Quality Control, Quality Assurance. If we don't follow the process, we basically don't get reimbursed. So it's very important that everything for, you know, we've, we do, it's through the process, including meetings like this. So we're just in the study stage right now, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So what would prevent you from not to do the project if something goes wrong? Nothing, there's nothing to stop you from not doing the project, right? It's at this, at this point, it uh, it's, it's, yeah, we don't see any issues. We know there's a need for this. The state already, the finance is already in place. I mean, you know, it, I don't see any issues unless we had something that no one knew about. But right. as you said, this place was already disturbed. We already have infrastructure in place. It's going to be mostly fill trying to add that lane. Right. So if anything, we're going to put stuff on top of existing. So I don't foresee any issues. Mm -hmm. I don't want to jinx myself. I know. That's what kind of where we at. <laughs> yeah. Please. For somebody who sits in that traffic heading southbound every morning, and besides the number of lights that have been added from my house to the highway, but I think the thing that frustrates me the most at that intersection is the opening into Dunkin' Donuts. Mm -hmm. So people are turning in there and blocking traffic. And then the number of cars that go from the middle lane to cut off people in the right lane somehow needs to be resolved. So it's, it's a great <laughs> observation, and that's one of the reasons why we're doing this. So this project's one of the two-phase projects. The main project is widening Lowell Road from Hafner's all the way down to Sagamore Bridge. Because of the finances, we can only do one 
phase at a time, which is phase one, Sagamore to Flagstone, and we're hoping that when the CMEC project opens up again in April, the town will be able to file for phase two of this, which is widening Lowell Road from Flagstone and Lowell all the way down to Hafner's, and they'll take care of that issue. In addition to that, we'll put a sign saying do not block, but as you know, people don't listen or they don't follow they don't, that. They don't listen, and then you have sort of the aggressive drivers yes. that are hugging the bumpers in front of you, people that are cutting off and almost mm -hmm. going off the road, trying to get onto the on-ramp and so, yeah, so be there in the morning. That is the main reason why there's a need for this. We don't want people to do this anymore, and the reason they do that is they don't want to wait. They want to basically right. cheat, go through that, and then change lanes at the last minute. We're trying to address that by adding the second lane. So you will have the same effect coming from Lowell Road from Walmart. Mm -hmm. It's got double lane. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be an issue over there. We're basically trying to mimic the same layout. As you can see on, uh, what's another one, I think. Right there. So this picture, what we're trying to achieve is the same layout as you have here. So we're trying to do the same thing this way. Yep should help a lot. You're gonna see a lot of improvements on Watson Road especially because they're gonna be able to land on two lanes versus one. And then if we open this up from here all the way to Hafner's, you'll see a lot of improvement along Low Road as well in the AM. That back up is gonna disappear or it's gonna be reduced a lot. There's, there's mornings there when I see the backup at Birch. It's just working slowly all the way down to. Uh, yeah, it could be backed up to the Subaru dealership. Yep. Yep. I just had a request. Um, since it's being televised, if you could come up to the microphone in the, at the podium to ask questions and give comments. Yeah. Does it answer your concern? I did your answer. Well, once I see the plan, it will yeah. probably more answer it. <laughs> I think the podium, actually. Podium. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Randy Brownrig. Um, I live on Little Hales Lane. The house that you had showed us earlier mm -hmm. is someone. Is there a resident that living in that house right now? So it's a bandit. It is. is. Does the town own it? No. So it's just the bank owns it, probably, right? No, it's owned by the same owners that have um, three properties that we have to deal with. See so if you go back to the right of way. Uh, so basically, the owner for this, this, and this is the same. Okay. They intended to develop this at some point. There was discussion about a Cumberland Farm going in here, and we were working with the developer and the owner. Uh, that fell through. There's other things in the works. Nothing is guaranteed yet, but we have had discussions with the uh, owner, and they've told us to move forward with the project. Okay. So our intent is to go and deal with this. We're hoping that house will be gone by the time we break ground, but if not, we'll have to deal and work around it. I have another question. Um, up on the highway, you saw where the wetlands were. Mm -hmm. I know that was man-made. That was done like 23, 25 years ago mm -hmm. when they did the construction over the Sagamore Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, if you have to go into that, will you just renew everything? Will you just move everything around? Or does that require a special ones, um, wetlands? Uh, so there's two things to it. We're not, we, we're, from, from the grading, for what we envision we're gonna do here, there is an existing, I don't know if you noticed, but right here is where the, where the pavement widens quite a bit yep. if you go there. So we're hoping to go from there and just kind of match here. So we don't foresee going here or the need for it. Mm -hmm. We don't know if it's going to be a knee wall or a two-to-one slope to catch up to it. Might be some impact related to the uh, 75, I think, for the state, for the wetland. Uh, impact, but we do not foresee getting here. If we do get in here for some reason, we'll just go through a dredge and fill application and basically make more wetland if we have to. All right. We'll make it, it's pretty wide right now, we'll just make it narrow and long if we have to. I don't All foresee right. that happening, but that's yeah. kind of what we're looking at. And they'll go through the state, and the dredge and fill application. And my other question, just kind of curious, um, a few years ago you guys put like, um, like a small little island in the middle of the road, you know? Has that in any way helped out traffic and accidents? You know, between um, um, Market Basket and I think Heffner's, there was an island built, a divider. You know what I'm talking about? Well, he wouldn't know. Uh, what, I'm what just trying to figure out. Has that maybe have, Goodwill? 
changed uh, any accidents from being prevented or helping with traffic or people cutting across? We don't, don't know. know. Yeah, I, I can't get Tip into it. Typically, right. medians medians typically oh. do help. Yeah. I think they're medians. I think they're yeah, it's it's like an it's oval. It's like an oval. Turning lane. No, it's not a turn. It, it's it's a divider. What are you referring to, Randy? I'll show you. Is this the concrete medium right no, here? No, is it you right talk, here? You're talking about a lot of accidents, and over in this way. Further over, down? Yeah. Further down, there's a so divider out there. So I'm just trying that's to figure not, out. That, that's right now, not part of it right now. <coughs> right, but you're talking right. about accidents, and you're talking about Accidents traffic. right here. Right. Right here only. Okay. That's what they're looking at. Further down, definitely plenty of accidents. We're plenty of accidents on Pelham and Lowell Road. That was one of the reasons you treated right. that light over there. Right. But anywhere in between, probably be evaluated during phase two. But right now, we're looking from here all the way out. Okay. James Battis, Six Potter Road. Uh, are there, uh, do you envision any traffic studies before and after to use to evaluate the success or failure of this? Mm. Uh, Possibly. I mean, we can, we could do counts. We, we, we have a very recent study that was done as part of that Cumberland Farms um, development that has, has a lot of information on existing traffic counts. And uh, it wouldn't be that difficult for us to do post-construction counts. I think that would be worthwhile. Yeah. I do too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so two projects to look familiar when it comes to improvements of traffic in Hudson will be adding a lane on 102 heading to Nashua, you know, the, the uh, library common and also adding a lane to Kimball Hill, left turn on 111, the most recent one that we did last year. Those are the improvements that we're envisioning to see, things like that. So if you're familiar with Kimball Hill at 111, mm -hmm. you know what that left turn has done over there, and actually VHB was the one that proposed that particular approach that we basically executed and it's been working well, very well. Also the backups that we used to uh, experience on 102 and now that we added the second lane going to Nashua, that has basically reduced the length quite a bit and basically allowed the town to keep up with the, all the add-on traffic that's coming from Londonderry, Wyndham, um, and other towns there as well. That's what we're envisioning here. It's not going to solve everything, but it's going to basically allow the town to keep up with all the additional traffic we're seeing cut through Hudson. Mm -hmm. You know, Pelham coming through and everything else. So that's, that's kind of the end game. Hello. Do you have any idea of how much it's going to improve traffic? The only way you're going to see that is through a traffic modeling if we weren't really want to get into it. And I'm not sure if I want to spend that much money into finding that it's an E or a C, but it's definitely going to see an improvement. Right. By how much we can get into it, but I think once you do it, you'll see it. Yeah, I don't think anybody really has any doubt that it'll make it better. Right. I'm just curious to know if we knew how much better. Yeah. It, 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 the state is not going to question, for example, like, you know, it's going to be an improvement. I'm just not sure. I mean, I'm sure if I tell Greg, you know, go ahead and run it, he'll be like, I'll be glad to do <laughs> it for, you know, X amount. I'm just, right. we're going to try to do everything we can to keep this obviously under budget and uh, within reason, but I, I, I think you'll see a, I think you'll see a significant improvement. And I think it may be, it may not be until you Open finish the second line. phase. Yeah, phase two is, I think, as if not more important than phase one, but you can't do phase two until you do phase one. Phase one. So phase one, it's gonna be mostly for Watson Road. That back up on Watson Road all the way to Musquash, you're gonna see that moving through right away once phase one is complete. Mm -hmm. You'll see significant improvement on Low Road once phase two is complete. And now you have those, that additional lane where it goes from one lane out to three and hopefully maybe something can be done with the Dunkin' Donuts entrance there as well. That, that I'm not sure how that, that went through by the planning board back in the old days without a site of site improvements, but that'll, that'll be for another night. But I'm totally aware of that, and I know that that creates a lot of problems there, especially people trying to get to the site holding up the entire traffic in the back. Um, I'm there with you, all of you, on that one. Mm -hmm. Please come forward. Any other question? Any concerns? <coughs> Timeline? Move on. <laughs> uh, I know, right? Um, we had discussion with the state, as I said, 
You know very well how long it took for the train station relocation at Benson. That seemed to take forever. We got that done at the last minute, uh, five years for that one. I know that the library lights here took forever to get through. I'm hoping, <coughs> knock on wood, if things go well, we get this thing approved this year and break ground, basically go out to bid sometime a year from now during the winter, get some good contractors, get some good numbers, and break ground. Construction, I don't, I hope we don't see much impact over there because the lane is already there. All we're doing is adding one. I'm hoping we're going to use the Sagamore Park Road as a staging area so we have that going for the town as well. We can park at the end of it, move equipment without impacting that AM traffic as much. Um, if the house is still there, it will probably be used for the construction period instead of bringing a trailer in there. We'll work with the owner. But um, I, I think it will be a good project, and I think the town has done very well with projects between 750000 to one point five. Um, we've seen significant improvements, as I said, at the Library Common. We've seen improvements at Kimball Hill and 111, uh, Pelham and Lowell Road, depending who you ask. With the new traffic light, I think things are better and safer over there. We haven't had an accident. Knock on wood, same thing. So we all know something needs to be done on Lowell Road. It's, it's a no-brainer, AM and PM. I know PM is more concerning than AM, but that's a bigger... It's a bigger and more expensive problem we have to deal with because it's a matter of where is it going to land. Here it's easy. It goes to the bridge. It disappears into Nashua and Route 3. We don't care. It's out of Hudson. <laughs> the other way around, they're coming through or they, you know, run. They're going to do the same road to the other bridge. Uh, <laughs> so, but we're, you know, we're doing well. I mean, as the ninth biggest uh, municipality, we're getting our fare, I believe, of federal funds, you know, 1.2 million. It's a good chunk of change. I'm hoping we go for the next phase, which probably be somewhere between $750,000 to 850 through an 80-20 again. I have a, I'm hoping we get that through, especially if we show that we are very serious about this, and hopefully we get close to the finish line. So uh, we'll, we'll be okay with the AM, as I said. PM will be something else we have to deal with. Another thing we're going to push for this is to put cameras, live feeds, to get a, a good handle on how much is being processed over there because we're getting different numbers. It's going to be a grid smart camera like we have over here in other locations. We have seven of them total now that are going to become online. And that's going to allow us to bring fiber optic there and then put in what they call adoptive signal system. So even though we not might be able to build a circumferential highway, maybe we'll find a better way to process traffic better with better and newer technology and software that's out there. So. Mm -hmm. We're going to hope that the state is going to approve the new equipment we're going to try to use over there and go from there. So, good things in the works. I hope I could do this this summer, but I don't, I don't think we'll be able to. But 18 months, I'll take that compared to three to five years. Mm -hmm. We're way ahead of the other. Other municipalities got the same projects similar to this and a little bit ahead. Mm -hmm. We're doing good. And we've got a great firm doing this, too. <laughs> Well, thank you all. Thank, yep. you. thank you. Thanks for coming Any out. Any questions, send me an email. Send Greg an email. We're here.